to speak at this conference that I think is uh, the best conference in the world. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to see a lot of people here that uh, I met at previous conferences. I hope uh, you'll be interested in my talk. Uh, it, it, uh, it looks threatening because I say it's a no-go theorem, but it's threatening only to philosophical ideas, not to physics. So your physics will be okay, uh, but the philosophy may change. But uh, from what I know, uh, very few people believe this philosophy, which is called Hilbert Space uh, Fundamentalist. So I think uh, we are all okay. Um, what's this all about? So if, when you have a quantum mechanical system that is closed, uh, you describe it in terms of the of a Hilbert space uh, Hermitian uh, operator, which is the uh, actually uh, self-adjoint operator, which is the Hamiltonian, and uh, a state vector. And this Schrodinger equation connects the Hamiltonian uh, with the evolution of the state uh, vector. So let me call this, uh, these three uh, objects minimalist quantum structure. Because in general, when we uh, see uh, the Schrodinger equation, we see this structure. Uh, now, uh, I want to uh, insist on a difference, which is, everybody knows, but uh, maybe not uh, always have, in, have it in mind. Uh, the difference between the wave function and the state vector. So the wave function is, you take the state vector and you project it on a basis, which is a position basis, and you get the wave function which tells you the amplitude, complex amplitude at every uh, point in uh, the configuration space. The state vector is something that doesn't care about the basis, doesn't know about it, is something abstract, just a vector in a Hilbert space, uh, like any other vector in the Hilbert space, and by this I mean that uh, the unitary symmetry uh, is unable to distinguish uh, them, except for their length, but uh, let's assume that they are all unit vectors. So now the question that uh, I'm, uh, I will talk about is whether it's possible that having only this minimalist quantum structure, so without having a position basis or something else that you can relate to physical reality, um, whether it's possible from this to obtain uniquely the three-dimensional space, a preferred basis, and by preferred basis we can understand also the position basis, so we can say that this one is included in, uh, in, uh, in this one, but not always, because there are theories that space emerges which uh, are different than, uh, than just taking the position basis. Or we'll preferred factorization of the Hilbert space, which uh, we know we need because we want to know which are the particle is the electron, which is the quark, and so on. And uh, all other physical properties that usually derive from uh, this, or maybe we need to add something more. Uh, and who can be interested in such a question? And I will say that uh, there are people who, who think that this is possible. Uh, they uh, usually, not usually, sometimes they call uh, this philosophy Hilbert space fundamentalism. Uh, an application of this uh, philosophy is uh, uh, Sean Carlos and Ajmet Singh's uh, version of uh, the manual's interpretation, which they call Mad Dog Everettianism, <laughs> uh, which explicitly states this, uh, that this is uh, everything and uh, you don't need uh, something else because it will emerge out of this. And other proposals would, which say that uh, um, more or less explicitly, but when they say explicitly, is rare. Uh, in, in many cases it's implicit that you, you have this and uh, uh, unitary evolution will, uh, will lead to decoherence which will make the preferred basis to emerge but uh, it's different from the claim that the preferred basis emerges when you know the positions and uh, other proposals that you have something like this which includes uh, gravity and uh, you cannot recover space or space-time out of it. Who does not need this? Uh, there are, uh, I, I think, majority who uh, who assume implicitly, not necessarily explicitly, 
that you also have the 3D space. Or maybe you have a position basis which gives you the configuration space and something else uh, you need to do to reduce the configuration space to three dimensions. Um, so uh, let me quote uh, Sean Carroll and Ashmit Singh. Everything else, uh, so you, you have the minimal quantum structure and everything else, including space and fields propagated on it, uh, is emergent from these minimal elements. Uh, also Scott Aronson, I think uh, Tegmark also supports this uh, idea, uh, but less explicitly because not everybody is taking care to be explicit when he's talking about the state vector and when he's talking about a function, and I didn't uh, look in, into the entire literature to find, but uh, from conversation I know that a lot of people believe uh, uh, that, they, that this is enough. Uh, Okay, so now I have to formalize what it will mean uh, to have a preferred structure and what it will mean for this preferred structure uh, to be to emerge and to be unique. Uh, and the formalization will cover the literature that, that I will uh, analyze uh, later, but after my talk. I mean, uh, my talk, my slides. Uh, I have a 100 slides, and uh, I will not have time to. No, but if there is question, I can jump to some of the, uh, uh, the theories that uh, uh, satisfy this definition. So a preferred structure would be, uh, I will denote it by S, uh, H, this is the Hamiltonian of psi, because you have the Hamiltonian fixed in the theory, but you have different uh, states. And... Um, any such stru structure should be invariant to the unitary transformations that, at least that preserve the Hamiltonian, because you have a structure, so if, if, you, if you say that something emerges from it, it has to be invariant to the symmetry of your uh, initial mathematical structure. So this mean, means that uh, you can define it, and you actually have to define it if you want to show that it is invariant, in terms of tensor objects, on the Hilbert space, so unit tensors on the Hilbert space, and uh, by tensor I mean just like in multilinear algebra. So you need this tensor product of the Hilbert space with itself, modulo some properties, problems that you may have because it's infinite dimensional. So you, you may need to add some conditions, but uh, the point is the same. So to specify what we mean by a preferred structure, you need to give the type of this tensor that tensors that make your structure, and also the conditions that uh, they satisfy. So for example, you, you write a paper and you say, uh, I'll show that space emerges out of this. You need to define what you mean by space, because maybe it's not what, uh, what we usually understand. Maybe it's some discrete structure, but uh, that at uh, low energy looks continuous like our space. Anyway, you need to specify by giving some uh, conditions. Uh, sorry, uh, in your Hamiltonian, you should tell what is your Hamiltonian, which degree of freedom, is it positive yeah. or negative yeah. or is it completely abstract? Yeah, completely abstract. Sorry, I wanted to specify this. So, for example, Sean Carroll says that you only need the spectrum of the Hamiltonian. So you don't uh, express it in a position, uh, in terms of positions and momenta, you just need the, an abstract operator, you only need the spectrum, he says, and he claims to derive space. So, yeah, I, uh, I had the... The, the same uh, reaction. So, speak about an energy without the energy of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, this is a thing which with which I actually I sympathize with this position because I am more uh, I am actually a mathematician and I sympathize with this position, uh, but it's not true. Uh, and uh, to prove that is not true, I I will show that whenever uh, you claim that you can do this and you obtain something unique. It's actually not unique. There are infinitely many. You can choose the solution in infinitely many ways that look physically completely different. Uh, but I sympathize with this position precisely because it's mm, like platonic. You know, this is why, for example, I think Tegmark uh, has the same view on uh, uh, manual interpretation. Uh, but uh, he didn't express it as clearly as uh, Sean Carroll. And Sean Carroll uh, wrote several papers with different authors where they derive this. 
so uh, let me give an example. So you need to have a bunch of tensors, which in general there will be just emission operators in most uh, cases. In all the cases that I analyze, uh, they are emission operators. And uh, they have to satisfy some conditions. For example, if you want, uh, you, if you have projections in your structure, they satisfy this condition that it, of idempotence. If you have positive semi-definite operators, they will satisfy this condition. Uh, and uh, let me uh, invent a name. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the kind of the structure consists of the type of the tensors of which your ten your structure is made. So this will be a bunch of tensors of different types and some equations or inequations that those tensors are supposed to satisfy. And these uh, equations or inequations, they have to be invariant to the unitary transformations that preserve your uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So they have to commute with it. Not necessarily, but if it, uh, this is the symmetry of the minimal quantum structure. So uh, the simple uh, case that covers uh, everything that was interesting in the literature is to have this structure consist of a bunch of emission operators. I index uh, it with alpha to show that there are different operators that may play different role in this uh, in the equations that constrain them. And uh, psi uh, to show that they may depend on uh, the state vector. So, uh, for example, preferred basis is just a collection of operators or projectors. They are one-dimensional projectors. If you want your basis to consist of vector, but some people, when they say basis, they mine in uh, projections that are not necessarily one-dimensional. And uh, three uh, and you can also mean uh, a generalized basis which consists of projective uh, operation uh, uh, PO VMs, uh, which uh, consists of this kind of uh, things, positive semi-definite operators. Uh, and uh, another Example is a 3D space, so these are the emission operators. And uh, since uh, X is in the configuration space, you need an additional condition to recover the 3D space. But you can also look at the Hamiltonian once you have it expressed in the configuration space and uh, find out when the potential uh, is stronger. Then define the distance and make a correspondence, a projection uh, from the configuration space to the 3D space. Uh, and uh, also, other things that uh, is supposed to emerge, according to Carol and other people, is the tensor product structure, uh, by which I mean, uh, as you all know, uh, every particle has its own uh, Hilbert space, and uh, all particles have uh, live in the tensor product of those individual Hilbert spaces. And uh, this tensor product is not uh, visible when you have uh, uh, the Hamiltonian and the uh, state vector. So it has to emerge according to Sean Carroll, who wrote something called the quantum meteorology to show how this uh, uh, emerges. And uh, I just point out to my paper where I give uh, a general proof where uh, everybody here is a general tensor, not necessarily a permission operator. Uh, and now to go to the no-go result, I, I will show that uh, this leads to uh, so we have two conditions that uh, they have to be satisfied, and uh, I will prove that you cannot have them both satisfied at once. Uh, the first condition is that of uniqueness, uh, and by uniqueness we mean, so if I have two st structures of the same kind, so by kind I mean you give the type of the tensors and also the equations uh, that they have to satisfy, uh, sorry. Uniqueness states that they have uh, that if you have to such structure, they have to be the same. This is the way mathematicians speak about uniqueness. Uh, but the other condition is something I call physical relevance, and I will start with an example. The three-dimensional space should be able to distinguish uh, different state vectors, and how it does it. Uh, so simply, you evaluate the state vector at a different, a different, uh, at a point, and you evaluate the other uh, state vector, and you see if they are equal. And if you find differences, they are not the same uh, uh, state vector. So uh, if my space is unable to distinguish, for example, the state vector from the state vector that is obtained by unitary evolution from me, 
It means that it's not, it doesn't behave like space because in our world, uh, space is uh, like a reference with respect to which we observe that mat matter uh, changes. So if psi doesn't change with respect to space, it means that what I discover that it emerges from the structure cannot be uh, space. I call it space, but it's not space. So it's not fair. Um, and the, the same apply if you say that you have, in general, a preferred basis or a tensor product. For example, uh, in a preferred basis, obviously, you project and you find out that uh, your uh, preferred basis is able to distinguish uh, physically distinct states by distinguishing the state vectors that, that represents those, those states. But when you uh, also when you have a tensor product, uh, for example, you take the partial trace, and this partial trace changes in time. It, five minutes, hour. Thank you. So let me show, uh, let me go to the picture. So uh, I express this condition in terms of invariance. And fortunately, when you have Hermitian operators, the only invariance that you can construct are these. I mean, you can also construct more of these tensors and uh, more of this size. But uh, uh, for uh, the literature that I uh, disproved, uh, this is sufficient. Okay. So let me let me illustrate a bit. So this is uh, this, this tra blue triangle represents the structure that I claim it emerges, and this represents the Hilbert space, not real Hilbert space. Uh, it's a simplified picture, and this is the state vector, and the dotted uh, blue lines uh, represent the uh, invariance, which means uh, these contractions, these uh, mean values that I construct using my Hermitian operators from my emergent structure and uh, the state vector. So, uh, uh, physical relevance says that there has to be another vector uh, that is in different relations, so it has different uh, uh, mean values. Uh, these uh, Hermitian operators have different mean, mean values for these uh, vectors. Uh, this is just because they are uh, to, this, to show in with using tensors that the tensors are different. You build some con uh, contractions, I think you get some scalars, and you know that those scalars don't change under unitary symmetry. So, all right. Uh, so the, uh, the the physical relevance says that uh, when I apply unitary, no. So this uh, other. Uh, state vector that I want to distinguish can be obtained from the first by a unitary transformation that commits to the Hamiltonian. Uh, always this is true. And uh, uh, if uh, my structure is able to distinguish, that, then uh, uh, I satisfy, it satisfies the physically relevance condition. And the theorem says that you have a structure of a given kind that satisfies these constraints that I uh, use to define my structure. Uh, either it's physically relevant or the, uh, there are infinitely many such uh, solutions. And sorry, because I spoke too long, uh, this is a sketch of the proof. So basically what I do, I use this uh, uh, to show a contradiction between the two conditions. So, so basically what I do, I take the vector and move it with the, uh, I mean, I rotate it to the unitary transformation S. And then I take the structure uh, which has to be the same because of the uniqueness. But when I uh, apply this, uh, because this uh, dotted, uh, these relations, this um, um, invariance, have to be the same. When I rotate it back, I, obtain, I have to obtain a different structure, the red one. So either they are the same or there are more. Thank you. And uh, if instead of S you choose a unitary evolution operator, but you apply it just like uh, to give an example that is concrete and you can touch. Uh, if you apply this, that unitary operator, not to evolve in time, but to just to turn around your basis, uh, you obtain that this present moment uh, looks like any other moment in the future or in the past or even from a parallel world. So this would mean that it's uh, exaggerated to say that the structure is unique. Thank you very much. I just want to show to what I applied it. So uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, when we have time, I can explain how it works with the uh, Sean Carroll's theory and the other things that, uh, that I did. Thank you very much. Sorry for that. So we have time for one question.
Yeah, about this uh, preferred basis. Uh, so uh, you've just shown that, like through standard quantum mechanics, there is no uh, there is no physically relevant basis which is not, not unique. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so what I sh actually or how I interpret the result is that you need to put it uh, to put it there. You cannot make yeah. it uh, appear out of just the, the uh, abstract uh, operator and the abstract uh, state vector. Yeah. So uh, just two small questions. Does yeah. this preferred basis uh, have to do with the quantum measurement problems preferred basis problem? And the second one is, if there is contextuality, can you can you solve this then? Does this contextuality uh, put in so, the extra uh, information. This is uh, intended as a, not as a constructive result to solve something, but uh, neither as a destructive to refute some theories, just to help people who think that they found something unique to realize that they have to assume that it has to have it, they have to put by hand the relation with the physical reality. And uh, I'll talk with you at the break later. Uh, it was only one question, but uh, I will leave Friday. Okay. I've got a quick one. Um, okay. If if I also had a representation, say the Lorentz group of which the Hamilton Hamiltonian is a part, would that still fall in under your critique, or would that be outside of it? So maybe I I need more more details because if if you if you represent a, a Lorentz group, uh, in general you have positions. Uh, you have a space on which uh, uh, you have the wave functions defined. But, but if you think that it's only uh, a Hilbert space, an abstract Hilbert space, and you have a group, group that, uh, uh, that applies, uh, there, there is something to discuss. I mean, you can try to use the Erlangen uh, program, the Klein idea, to factor it out. But it doesn't uh, work quite like this. But we can discuss. Thank you. Thank you.